Hello folks, I'm Dean with Dean's Woodworking. Y'all come on in the shop and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going to turn some little boxes. I'm talking about about three and a half, four inches long that you can put toothpicks or uh, your medicine for the day or whatever it is you stash in your pocket, wallet, or purse, okay? So y'all come on in, make yourself comfortable. We're going to get started. As you'll see, I've got a about a one inch square blank here in the lathe. Okay, so I've got a template right here I wanted to show it to you guys it's six inches long same length as the blank we'll end up losing about an inch off each end the top portion is going to be about an inch and a quarter the bottom portion is going to end up about oh two and a quarter with about a half inch or a little less tenon on it to fit up inside the uh, the top, okay? So I made this template, and just a little tip, you'll notice I ran some bandsaw marks in it. That's so I can flip it over and use it upside down. If I've got the blank in the chuck all the way up here, I can simply slide that in. I know that right here, that's where I'm gonna part that off at. Stick with me and let's go ahead and get it parted off. Now we can see that mark there even though I only marked one side. And we're just gonna go ahead and part that off. Now that I've got that parted off, I'm gonna come right back in here with my skew. And I'm just going to make a little bit of a divot because I want the drill bit to be able to start in the center and not be thrown off, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're gonna start off with a 5 8 inch Forstner bit. We're gonna come in and we're gonna drill just to the uh, back of this right here. That little, little black stripe around there is gonna be our determining mark. And when I line up with that, we're going to back out. We're done with the Forstner bit for right now. And we can mark one inch to go in on the top. Now we also know that we need to go in two inches or about two and a quarter inches on the bottom. So I'll go ahead and mark it as well. Let's turn the lathe back on. And we're going to drill that to our one inch mark. Folks, at this point, we're done with the top. We'll go ahead and take it out. We're going to put the bottom in there. And again, I'm buttoning it right up against the chuck and tighten it down. This does not give you the most accurate fit. But what it does is it makes something that you can do at a pretty fast rate. And really, that's what we're trying to do here. I have a... Uh, Craft show coming up the 4th and 5th of September. And please don't ask me if I'm ready for it. It honestly kind of slipped up on me this year. We're going to drill. This is going to be the bottom. And we're just going to drill it out two inches. And go ahead and bring that bit out often. because that sawdust builds up in there and it can build up a lot of heat. So now what we're wanting to do is we need to put a tenon on this so we can fit this over it. Now what we're actually going to do is we're gonna make the tenon the same depth as, I guess I'll call that the crown of the Forstner bit, for lack of a better term. I'm not exactly sure what the official name of that is. And I'll put that mark around there and I should be able to see that. So I'm gonna take my half inch skew and I'm just gonna do some peeling cuts here. I'll tell you what, I will go ahead and make one little cut right here. That just kind of lets me know where it's at. So now we've got to get this down to where it's going to fit. And I'm just going to kind of make a little bit of a bevel there. And we're going to see if that'll fit. Not close yet. So I know now that I can bring the rest of this down to that level and then I will come in and just make another little bevel there you folks seeing what I'm doing still not quite fitting I can take out the bevel and I can put another one in not yet 
So again, we're going to take it out. And we're going to put another bevel in. And now we're starting to get somewhere, okay? As we rotate that, it gives us a burnish mark, okay? I can come back in, and I don't want to take that burnish mark off, but I can come right up to it. We're good right there. At this point, folks, I'm done with the inside. We can take it out of the chuck. Now, before I started, you'll see here I put some lines and a center mark there, and I put some lines and a center mark there. Now I can mount this between centers and shape it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a couple of more, a few more to this point, and I will be back and we'll start the turning the outside of those, okay? I've got several of these, several different types of blanks. That way when we get to the craft show, folks have some options. Okay, folks, while I'm finishing up this run of uh, blanks and getting the interiors done, why don't you folks take just a minute, go down and hit that subscribe button. Leave me a like and a comment if you would. And if you don't mind, go ahead and share the video. That sure does help the channel out to get the information to more folks. Thank you much, and I appreciate you watching. I'll be back in just a minute, okay? Okay, folks, I'm back. We've got some of the blanks drilled out, and let me show you what we're going to do with them. So what we've done... So we've got the top drilled out, the bottom drilled out, the tenon cut so that they fit snugly together, very snugly at this point. In the beginning, I made a center mark on each end. That way I can put them between centers and be as close as possible there. What we're going to do at this point now is go ahead and turn this and shape our box, okay? Let's go ahead and get started. Now what I've done is made myself a jig. I showed you guys this earlier. And basically when we started, we had a six inch blank. When we cut that tenon out of the middle, we lost some, and then just trimming it, we lost just a little bit. So I know from this point, I drilled in one inch. So it's an inch and a quarter from here to here. So I came out just a little bit past that and made myself a mark. That'll be the end of our box. Okay, if I go up from the edge of the tenon, I know this is the edge of our tenon inside there. This is the bottom of our hole. So I came back about a quarter of an inch and made myself a mark there. So we'll use that to be able to guide us, basically know what's inside there. So let's go ahead and get this going, okay? Make some little longer marks so I can see them a little bit better. And again, I'd rather be a little bit long than a little bit short. So I'll come out there and make me a mark there. We'll do the same thing on this side. And at this point, we can go ahead and start rounding this off. Now really, once you get it round, you can go with just about any shape you want.
let's take a real quick look and just see how big around what our diameter of that is okay we're about seven eighths of an inch right there the drill we put in there was a five eighths so we got about an eighth of an inch wall on either side of that right now so let's take it down just a little bit more this one we're going to keep simple just a basic rounded off on each end i don't do a lot of them like that but we're going to do this one that way Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it with just a little bit of sandpaper, not a lot. Start off with some 150, go to 220 and 320. We're going to hit it with some 220 now. Come in with some 320. Turn the lathe off and I'll just go back and forth along that with that 320. Okay folks, then we're gonna put some burn lines on this thing. We're gonna make one of them right there at the intersection. We're gonna come up about an eighth and do another one and down about an eighth and do another one. I'm going to use a finer wire for this. Okay, so once we've got that burned in there, we'll take our sandpaper again. We'll go straight to the 320. We're gonna come in with a skew. Okay, so we came in with the skew, we knocked that off. That end looks great. This end will take a little saw and knock it off and go ahead and sand it. Sometimes that can be a booger to get off. Let me grab something real quick and I'll show you what to do. Okay, you can use shelf liner, some of those things you use to grip jars with, to open the jars. One of the things that I do, I've got this sandpaper that's kind of got a rubbery back on it. And I'll use that and it just pops it right loose. Once you get it loose, you can work it just a little bit or put just a little bit of oil on it and it'll work just fine after that. Let me knock this nub off. I'll sand the end of that and put a little walnut oil on it and we'll take a look at what it looks like. All I do is take one of these little flush cut saws, pull that through there. It, do, it doesn't take too many pulls. In fact, it's, it doesn't take much to get that right off of there. All right, I'll be right back, folks. Hello, folks. I'm back. I've got uh, one of the blanks on the lathe. I've got uh, 14 more of them in various different woods. I've got the bottoms drilled out, the tops drilled out, the tenons and the mortises done and then fitted back together. So now we're going to put them back on the lathe. We're going to turn the outside to shape, put some finish on it, and we'll be done with the project. We're going to do that times 14. Well, I'm not going to film all 14. I wouldn't put you folks through that. I'll show you a couple of different different uh, shapes and things that I think you might like to do. And then I'll show you some photos of the end of uh, several different shapes, okay? Before it joins together, I'm just gonna make a slight V cut. Instead of trying to hide that, we'll just show it off. So on this top here, we're gonna put just a little bit of a thistle shape to that. We'll round this over just a little bit. Yeah. 
this bottom. We're just going to bring it sloping right up to that bead. Take a look at that and see what we got. I think we're looking pretty good. And let's take a look and see where our end was supposed to be there. Let's go ahead and mark that. And we've got this soaked down with walnut oil, so we're going to apply that liberally. We'll let that set just a minute, and basically we'll wipe it off. Go ahead and turn the lathe on. Let that paper towel put a little bit of heat on that. It'll help push that walnut into that wood. Then I've got just a little piece of beeswax here. We're not going to do a whole lot on that. Just a little bit. And again, the rag, let it, a little bit of heat on that. Kind of melt that beeswax and get it right on into that wood. From there, folks, I can take my little flush cut saw. It doesn't take anything to knock that off. And then with just a little bit of sanding, I can fix those ends. And we have ourselves a nice little box. I can put that on the table at the craft show and get 10 or 12 dollars out of it easy, okay? Makes a neat little something. Put knickknacks in. You can sell them at the shows. People love them. Hey folks, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and leave me some comments. Let me know what you think. Stay safe, stay healthy, and happy turning.